Welcome to this section on teaching resources and pedagogical practices for climate change. My name is Rahul Chopra. I am the course coordinator of this course uh, being developed at ICER Pune. Additionally, I am also the coordinator of a climate education project of the International Science Council called TropicZoo. In this lecture, we will show you some examples of teaching resources on climate change. These include several excellent databases of educational resources from across the world. I will focus on several different types of teaching tools. Uh, you know, we are all used to teaching uh, in, in a particular style, lecturing in our classrooms or so. But in addition to just our regular lectures, we might also be able to introduce classroom and lab activities, MOOCs and e-learning courses, interactive visualizations, video lectures and micro lectures, games, audio and other different types of pedagogical tools. We will kind of understand how different pedagogical practices uh, for use of these teaching tools can be helpful in your particular course. While giving you examples of these different teaching tools, we will understand uh, a little bit about new pedagogical practices. And there are some interesting aspects that we will focus on such as how can you incorporate a multidisciplinary approach to teaching. How can climate education examples be used in order to integrate climate science with the teaching of core curriculum of different subjects and majors? And how can we use new technology, new digital, dig digital pedagogical tools and strategies in our classroom? So to begin with, as a faculty who might be teaching climate change in your particular course, a first place that you might want to obviously refer to is this course which is being offered by the National Resource Center on Climate Change which is available on SWAM. So this course as you know contains several different modules and video lectures and different sorts of teaching resources that subject matter experts have been showing to you and you can use these resources or these video lectures to develop your own course in your classroom. Another one which I would like to draw your attention to is, is this particular climate change education database which is called TropicSU. It stands for Transdisciplinary Research Oriented Pedagogy for Improving Climate Science and Understanding. Now this is a project that I have been involved in and this is basically a project where we are collating and curating and presenting a lot of teaching tools. So a lot of aids for teachers to use in their classroom. These would include step-by-step -step lesson plans, uh, teaching tools that are location and language specific, uh, teaching tools that you will be able to use in order to teach different topics of climate science and climate change. And additionally, this particular resource also allows for teachers of different disciplines to teach topics of their discipline using climate related examples. This allows for uh, an improved way in which different educators from different disciplines can incorporate climate change into their curriculum itself. To give you a brief example of what sorts of climate topics can be taught, I urge you to go to the website tropicsu.org and different types of teaching tools uh, classified according to climate topic are listed here, whether it be climate and health, climate and the anthroposphere, the role of the atmosphere, the role of the biosphere and so on and so forth. So you know if you were to start teaching a course in climate change and you are looking for pedagogical tools, as you might know from this course itself that it is important to understand the science of Earth's climate itself. And in this aspect we focus on how to distinguish between natural variability of Earth's climate with anthropogenically forced climate change. So we try to understand the roles of the Earth's atmosphere in order to understand that we look at things such as the layer models, the greenhouse gases and their role in climate change, winds, clouds, uh, different types of circulation. Uh, we try to understand the Earth's orbital parameters and how changes in Earth's orbit around the sun change the flux of energy that is received on planet Earth. Milankovitch cycles, we look at the roles of the oceans, we look at the roles of the biosphere, lithosphere, cryosphere, long term cycles such as the carbon cycle. Also interesting to look at energy, economics and climate change, policies, politics, disasters and so on and so forth. Now a lot of these topics you, are, you might have seen in our course content in the topics of the course itself, 
Uh, but what I'd like to show you through the, the resources in, in, the, in, the, in the coming few slides are that there are several excellent teaching tools that you can use for each one of these topics. And in the next few slides, I'd like to show you examples of these things. But before that, uh, other than Tropixu, of course, there are many, many other excellent education databases. And these are some of them which I am showing you, which you can use to go and find resources which are relevant to you. So, one of the ones which uh, is very excellent resource is, is something called the Science Education Resource Center or SERC, which is based at Carleton College. And this is a place where one could get many, many different sorts of teaching tools and uh, lab activities or classroom activities for climate change. So, these are a list of, uh, you know, a section where you can find out what are the different lab and classroom activities which might be present at the SERC database itself. And another one which is an excellent resource for climate education tools is this thing called CLEAN, Climate Literacy and Energy Awareness Network. Now, this CLEAN net has tied up with um, uh, SERC and several of the tools are listed out here and these are peer reviewed and often also have some sort of uh, comments of different educators who might have already used it in their classroom. So, this is another excellent resource and when you look at, you know, their interface, you will see that the teaching tools are divided according to resource types, according to grade level and according to region and many other factors itself. Another excellent resource that we have come across and, and you might want to use also is one created by individual faculty. Uh, at different universities. This is one created by David Archer at the University of Chicago and is available at this website, which is shown on the slide. This contains several different resources, which are going to be very useful for you in your classroom. These include different models. They will include lectures, video lectures and online classes. In addition to that, other sorts of uh, information that he has put out there. UCAR, Center for Science Education, has its own section on climate change activities, which is also listed here. Other sort of places where you could get information include this, such as the University of Washington has a program on climate change and climate science for the classroom, including all the labs and different other resources which are present here. UNCC Learn is another excellent resource, which contains several different types of teaching tools. Specifically, they make very good short video lectures or e-courses, which you could also use for introducing different topics of climate science and climate change. Another wonderful resource we've come across is this one called the Teacher's Climate Guide. It is an education package for subject teachers that explains climate change in the context of each school subject. So, some of the resources here might be for a slightly lower audience and maybe a school, maybe school teachers or so, but it still contains several very good research resources. Climate change education is another resource that you might want to look at. Another one where if you are looking for multimedia resources on education is this one called Cli CAMEL. So, CAMEL climate change education, free, comprehensive, interdisciplinary multimedia resource for educators. Climate.gov has, uh, you know, sections for teachers again, which include how to teach climate, climate system, causes of climate change, uh, measuring and modeling climate, climate impact, human responses to impact, nature of climate science and so on and so forth. Another resource you might want to look at is called the Alliance for Climate Education and they have sections both for students and for teachers in here. CAKE, which is dealing primarily with adaptation, is a resource which is Climate Adaptation Knowledge Exchange and it has a large number of climate adaptation case studies and resources. The Climate Web is another wonderful resource which is basically uh, contains a lot of information related to climate science and climate change uh, and, and this can be found at the climateweb.com. There are several other resources, educational databases and you might be able to find all of these at the Tropixu educational resource database link, which is shown on the slide out here. Okay. Now, what I would like to show you in the next few slides is different types of teaching tools. Now, we are very used to teaching, uh, you know, in our classrooms in a typical lecture oriented fashion and uh, it is worth considering the fact that 
the ways in which information is now consumed by us, by our students have changed. The, and if the ways in which we are consuming information has changed, you know, it makes sense for us to now present our material to our students also in a new fashion. So, uh, if lectures might not be the only way of teaching in our classroom, what are the other types of teaching tools that we could use? Uh, in order to uh, engage with our students more effectively. So, one of the uh, teaching tools that we are all aware of and is gaining more and more popularity are MOOCs or e-learning courses. You are taking this course and this is a MOOC itself. So, it kind of suggests the ways in which things are moving in any case. So, several sources of MOOCs you guys might be aware of. These include Coursera, EDX, UNCC Learn and others to show you just a snapshot, just a few examples of what are these different e-learning courses for climate change that are available right now. Okay. So, to begin with, of course, this particular NRC course itself should be our first place where higher education faculty should go, because it is a very well designed MOOC on climate science and climate change with specific modules on the impacts of climate change on India. It is also multidisciplinary in the fact that it also uh, focuses on the, the social sciences as well as policy and governance issues related to climate. Okay, so, here is an example of uh, a MOOC that you might find interesting or could use in your classroom uh, or even to gain more understanding yourself. Right? This is one developed again by David Archer at the University of Chicago and this is information that is present on his website. And so, there are two different types of uh, lectures which he has presented, one which are a classroom format about 45 minutes long and then there is a Coursera format which is much shorter in terms of teaching to students keeping their attention span. The UNCC e-learn MOOCs are very interesting. Uh, a lot of them are introductory and they tend to be a lot shorter than long courses. So, if you want to teach an introductory e-course on climate change, you might be able to use resources presented here. Uh, now, for teachers who might be teaching the compulsory introduction to environmental sciences course, there is a module on climate change that you have to teach. An introductory e-course on climate change that is shown out here might be a wonderful resource that you could use in order to teach that topic. There are some other aspects related to climate change, short MOOCs in their repository here. These include things like children and climate change. We do not often see this particular topic cities and climate change, human health and climate change and so on and so forth. So, we would advise you to take a look at this particular resource. There are other e-courses which are available. This is from the uh, Penn State University and it is a very extensive course which is called Earth in the Future containing many, many different modules. When you go to places such as Coursera, there are a uh, few courses on climate change and which are available. We found this one being quite interesting that uh, it tells you, it shows you how you can create your own particular climate models and again uh, is a good resource to kind of move. Another type of tool that you might want to use or a different teaching tool are basically what we call classroom and lab activities. So, often you would have in India, we would call it practical sessions where you might have two to three hours where you, your students would be in a lab and uh, if you are teaching a course on climate science and climate change, you can supplement your lectures and the material that you are providing with classroom and lab activities. Often these are hands on activities and uh, there are many wonderful sort of classroom lab activities. Again, I will show you a sh sort of glimpse of what is available. A lot of these are again listed on the Tropixu website and you would be able to find them on all of the other educational databases that I mentioned earlier on. I will show you some examples of different types of lab activities. Most of these now are shown from the SERC educational database that is the Science Educational Resource Center database. So, here is a lab activity on how you can map the coastal vulnerability of sea level rise in a particular location in the US or how can you model the ocean thermohaline circulation using particular software. So, your module where you are talking about climate and the hydrosphere and the role of the ocean and 
thermohaline circulation can be supplemented by a lab activity where you are actually modeling this circulation or if you are teaching your students how to reconstruct past climate, you might talk about a pollen database and so how can we use this pollen database to study vegetation history and understand past climate and the links between climate and vegetation or if we want to understand the links of climate in the biosphere and how can cl how climate change is endangering particular types of population of species in this case fish you can show this by doing this particular lab activity for those interested in again looking at uh, the el nino southern oscillation and so here is a wonderful sort of lab activity that you could use or is climate driving rain shifts uh, using the examples of beetles, mammals and plants. Uh, if we are more interested in understanding things which are more topical such as you know what is the amount of greenhouse gases which are uh, emitted in the atmosphere if you were to drive a, a sports car versus a hybrid or an electric lab activities are for there. How is human health being affected by changing climate such as you know is malaria and the distribution geographic distribution of malaria changing with global climate change wonderful lab activity the role of the snow cover in shaping climate so the role of the cryosphere in this particular case would be important how are cities affecting their local uh, climate again a wonderful sort of lab activity and so on and so forth so there are many classroom or lab activities from a wide variety of sources again i mentioned Tropic Zoo as being one of the main sources which is collating a lot of these lab activities, but any of those other educational databases that I mentioned in the beginning would be wonderful resources to get uh, these types of teaching tools. Now, you know more and more uh, we are realizing that video lectures or video micro lectures are also an effective way to teach in our classroom and uh, in this section I will just show you a little bit of examples of what are different video lectures or micro lectures which might be uh, useful to teach uh, particular topics. So, again uh, a lot of these are from the Tropic Zoo database on videos and so in this one there is a series of lectures on climate and the interaction with the biosphere or if you want to teach uh, the greenhouse effect it is nice to show a video with a nice visualization. So, something like the greenhouse effect can be taught with a short video or something on food security. Uh, other sort of uh, you know topics such as the Coriolis effect are much easier taught when there is a sort of visual tool which is available in order to do so. Same thing with things such as Hadley circulation cell so on and so forth. So, many of these video lectures and micro lectures are also available at these various databases that I have pointed out to. Okay. Here are things which are more specific to let us say the Indian monsoon. So, typically you know rather than just uh, using a, a textbook or a paper, one could also supplement this information using short lectures or video micro lectures in this case. Uh, now, often in our class, uh, you know, we, we do not really use many models or simulators in order to sort of engage with the students beyond, uh, let us say, lecture or lab activities, but these models or simulators are also available and many of them are available and designed by. Uh, uh, researchers in order to sort of supplement their own teaching, right. So, it is there for pedagogical purposes and we would like to show you maybe a few of them something where you can model let us say earth's energy balance and to understand what is the greenhouse effect of the earth's atmosphere some models do exist or if you want to show uh, you know sort of the role of earth's orbital parameters in determining the climate of planet earth a model such as this Milankovitch orbital data viewer might be useful. If we want to understand what is really the, the role of individual greenhouse gases in, uh, in, in determining the flux of energy which is finally received on, on the surface of the planet and what is uh, planetary surface temperatures going to be, uh, a model such as the greenhouse gas and infrared radiation would be a wonderful one to look at. Again, David Archer's repository is a wonderful place to get all sorts of models and there are you know more than a 10 or 12 of these models listed here. They all include sort of information about how you can use these models 
and, and some sort of associated exercises with it. In addition to this, there are some other places where you could get models information. Here is an example of what we mean by a model or a simulator. This one is called the ISAM integrated impacts of climate change, where one could change the various scenarios of the usage of energy, uh, whether it is high business as usual or low or a ramp down uh, by 2050 and you can sort of produce different outputs in the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere or the surface temperature. So, this would be an excellent way in which students can understand topics using these models and to actually engage with the material in a much more comprehensive fashion. We also present uh, visualizations as a different type of teaching tool and several of these are present in, in, in various databases uh, and these are of again a wide variety of topics can be covered, radiation balance, uh, human migration using story maps, the greenhouse effect or black body radiation and planetary temperatures and so on and so forth. Now, we do not often introduce any audio uh, as, a, as a means of teaching in our classroom. However, we find that a lot of these topics of late, uh, which, which are topical in nature, tend to come out as podcasts. And therefore, one could introduce a little bit of these uh, in, in either a classroom or also have students sort of listen to these audio podcasts prior to coming to their classroom. And so, there are various audio tools which might be available. This could be things where uh, students could listen to a discussion. This one is called Imagining Climate Change, where different writers and, uh, and, and visual artists are conversing with one another about climate change. Or, uh, you know, it could be uh, a little more scientific, such as how are glaciers responding to climate change and so on and so forth. So, some other wonderful resources include something called the Climate Minute. Again, these are very short audio podcasts. The Yale Climate Connections uh, database is another one where a lot of audio is basically um, uh, sort of collated and, and produced or so. A new type of pedagogical tool that we think would be very interesting for you all to engage your students with are video games. And we found uh, and, and collated and curated a few of these. Uh, so, some things uh, such as uh, you know the ones here where you can understand climate vulnerabilities, building climate resilience would be wonderful to be able to understand mitigation and adaptation or even whether we can uh, look at games where students make decisions and policies to improve resilience of a city in the face of climate change or they assume decision making roles to help the cities in, in terms of adaptation and stuff like that. A wonderful game which is shown out here is uh, something called uh, build your own earth where uh, you can build a planet earth with different you know, factors about how the atmosphere might, might be like or what its distance might be from the sun and so on and so forth and you can examine what the climate effects would be of that particular planet. You can look at planet earth at some point in the past. You can look at you know what planet earth is like today and make all these comparisons. So, a wonderful way to engage with students also. Another one which we like very much is this called climate change and human health, which is basically talking about what is the impact of climate change on health and what are the various policies, actions that could be developed for preventing the spread of various disease, etcetera. So, in this section now, what I would like to do is show you some examples of uh, different teaching tools, which are mapped to various topics of climate science and climate change. So, if you are a teacher and you are interested in understanding things such as the role of the atmosphere in determining uh, planet earth's climate, what might be the tools or teaching tools that you could use. So, here uh, a lot of these are again classified on the Tropixu website and we urge you to actually go to this particular resource uh, in order to understand or to look at a lot of these resources. Of course, you can go to a number of these other databases, which are also potentially categorizing teaching tools according to climate topic. So, if you are interested in, uh, in teaching more about climate and the atmosphere and you want to just introduce uh, you know, how does atmospheric warming work, you might want to use a reading which is shown on the left side of this particular screen. If you want to learn about heat energy transfer in earth system, planetary energy balance, we could use a, a model simulator which is shown here. 
or if we want to understand the role of particular greenhouse gases, which is the most potent greenhouse gas in our atmosphere, uh, how much would it absorb energy in the atmosphere, we can use models such as this, but under all under the climate and atmosphere sort of category. Or if we want to visualize what is the greenhouse effect of the atmosphere, the infrared spectra of greenhouse gases. So, all these tools are listed according to climate and the atmosphere or so. If you are interested in looking at what might be the tools available, if you are looking to teach climate and the biosphere, you could look at tools such as a, a series of video lectures or a classroom or a lab activity where squirrel species distribution is changing due to changing climate. You might want to focus instead on a classroom or a lab activity, which shows the link between climate change and phenology in plants, such as the flowering of that and so on and so forth. Or you might want to introduce a short little article about how are birds at risk of extinction due to climate change. If you have more time and want to explore this in greater detail, your students can potentially make a model to explore things such as the Gaia hypothesis or a guided lecture and a discussion to understand sort of animal migration. So, if you are looking to teach topics such as climate and the cryosphere, again there are a wide variety of tools that you could use. The first one listed out here is classroom lab activity, where you can reconstruct past climate using isotopic composition data from ice cores. This particular activity takes uh, real data from the Vostok ice core and uh, plots the past temperature using uh, hydrogen isotopic data as well as oxygen isotope data. Or you might want to do a classroom lab activity, where we can look at the Arctic sea ice over time. You can also introduce your students to things such as a mobile app, which lists all the glaciers of the world and information about them. Or you could use an interactive visualization to show the shrinkage and growing of a glacier as a result of changes in climate and so on and so forth. For climate and the hydrosphere, again, what are the teaching modules that are available? Vast variety of them, starting with climate change and water systems, resulting effects on human society. We could even introduce the idea of uh, how ocean chemistry might be changing due to uh, increased CO2 in the atmosphere and then being taken up by the oceans. How is this affecting or making the oceans acidic? and affecting things such as the growth of oysters, or you could look at things such as what is the impact of ENSO and human activities on river hydrology. You could use a visualization, where you could see what is the effect of sea level rise on particular places. In this case, it is the coast of California, or you could introduce things such as the Indian monsoon and so on, so forth. If you are interested in teaching something such as the long term cycle, which is typically, you know, we would focus on the carbon cycle in this particular case. In our course, you could use a model or a simulator, which is telling us about the geologic carbon cycle and its role in stabilizing Earth's climate, or what is the impact of human activities on natural carbon cycle, and so on and so forth. In terms of Earth's orbital parameters, again, you can reconstruct past climate using your ice core data and show all the variations, which are taking place over very long time scales, tens of thousands of years and hundreds of thousands of years, are primarily related to uh, changes in Earth's orbital parameters. We could, you know, supplement this information using uh, another sort of model simulator, which is the Milankovitch orbital data viewer. So, these are ways in which you could introduce all these novel types of tools in order to teach particular topics of, of your climate change and climate science course. If disasters and hazards is something you are interested in teaching in your particular course, we can look and see, is there an in, a particular trend in the hurricane intensity and is that, could that be linked to changing climate. Uh, if we want to understand things like, what is the vulnerability of particular coastal locations to sea level rise, we could use that. Now, if you want to introduce aspects of energy, economics and climate change, there are a wide variety of resources available here too. Whether it is teaching about uh, global warming as a tragedy of the commons, and this might be useful for even people in economics to teach, or the economics and global climate change. 
whether you want to maybe use a model or a simulator to understand uh, the relationship between climate change, economics and society. If you are interested in understanding about energy usage and especially about the economics of oil, we could sort of use a model or simulator like this. If you want to talk about what is the cost benefit analysis of carbon emission ab abatement, lab activities like this exist. So, there are several wonderful teaching resources for this. Climate and health would be another topic which would students would find very engaging and the various types of tools that you could use for your students could be introducing the topic either through a video or a full teaching module on climate change, the environment and human health or is the link between the geographic distribution of malaria and increased temperature caused due to climate change, whether we want to talk about psychology and global climate change or you know using a game where you could play uh, and understand climate change and human health. Uh, these are also uh, resources available for you. For policies, politics and governance, this topic could be supplemented using pedagogical tools such as the games or a podcast and so on so forth. Okay, in this next section, what we would like to do is introduce to you how topics in different disciplines can be taught using climate related examples. We feel that uh, students uh, in, the, in this generation and the coming generation need to be made aware of climate change uh, in their classroom itself and often enough they may not be given the opportunity to learn about climate change if the schools or colleges that they are going to are not offering these courses. So, in order to improve the awareness of climate change amongst these students, can climate change be offered in different disciplines or can students get to learn about climate change through topics of different disciplines using climate related examples. So, in this section we would like to present to you how topics in different disciplines can be taught using climate related examples. This will also be a way in which we can introduce the idea of the importance of multidisciplinary pedagogical practices and the usage of integrated teaching tools in your classroom. An example, all of the a lot of these examples are again from the Tropixu website and uh, where uh, different topics of different disciplines can be taught using climate related examples. For example, if you are a teacher of the biological sciences and you wish to uh, introduce particular aspects of let us say distribution of species in your classroom, you might be able to use a classroom or a lab activity such as this one listed here called what do squirrels know about climate change. This activity enables students to determine how biodiversity might be affected by climate change. They learn about changes in the distribution and habitat of squirrels over time and then they can understand climate change as a potential cause of change in biodiversity. If as a teacher in biology you want to introduce the topic of phenology, flowering of plants, leaf out and so on and so forth we could use educational resource such as this one, where the students will analyze phenological data and then sort of understand the link between phenology and climate change. If you are a teacher of chemistry, if you are teaching a topic such as pH or uh, acidification and so on and so forth, we would urge you to look at a resource such as this. You know, you can look at whether the pH of ocean water is changing due to changing climate. If you want to teach about uh, the molecular structure of compounds, in this case uh, you could use the example of carbon compounds CO2 and uh, methane and so on and so forth and introduce uh, uh, sort of a topic where uh, the effect of electromagnetic radiation on these molecules and therefore the role of greenhouse gases in climate change can be explained better or so on. If you are a math teacher, we could use things uh, such as how can trigonometric functions be used to model local temperature or can we create particular uh, models such as a energy balance model by actually writing code in, in software such as MATLAB or Mathematica or how do we understand uh, uh, introductory calculus topics such as differentiation, polynomial differentiation, tangent line problems etcetera, but in this case use 
carbon dioxide data or so. For teachers teaching statistics, you could use a lab activity such as the one shown here, where you could understand trends in hurricane intensity by using examples such as the intensity of hurricanes uh, over the last few decades. So, as a teacher, you could teach topics such as data analysis, linear slope, confidence interval, student's t distribution, so on and so forth. For economics, uh, concepts such as the tragedy of the commons could be used by using global warming examples or full modules on what are the economics of cl climate change itself. If you are a teacher of the social sciences, you could talk about climate refugees and how uh, large scale human migration is happening due to climate change or if you are teaching about food systems, you could uh, you, you sort of link that to climate change or human health itself and what is the linkage between climate change and human health. For those in the humanities stream, uh, a new genre which is cli-fi or uh, climate fiction can be used. There are modules that talk about climate literacy and uh, understanding of how literary tools can be used through which climate science can be understand better or, the as or different aspects of climate justice, so on and so forth. For geography, if you are talking about sea level rise, there are tools which are available or glaciers, uh, you can use several tools. In earth sciences, there are a wide variety of tools certainly, which can be related to climate science, whether it is uh, reconstructing past climate through Vostok ice core or building your own earth or using models. For physics, you could teach concepts such as radiation, heat transport, convection energy mass conservation using various climate related uh, topics and so on so forth. So, we would like to stop here by just showing that uh, as teachers there is a wide variety of tools which are available and we would urge you to actually look at a lot of these resources to incorporate them in your classroom uh, for most effective teaching 